In past videos, we've taken a look at how you can dynamically display images based on an LV uh, drop-down click. Okay. In today's video, we'll kind of expand that, but we're going to do the same thing and show you how easy it is to add GNAI into Apex uh, so that it'll dynamically return, uh, based on who you click, information ab about them. Uh, at the time of this recording, our GNAI service was only available in the Midwest region in Chicago. Uh, we'll go back down to Analytics and AI, over to GNAI. And today, uh, we can see uh, over here, we're going to be working in this compartment. And uh, if you want to just test, you can view all the different models you have access to out of the box. Uh, we're going to use the Cohere Light model to start, and I'll show you how to change it to the Llama model later on. Uh, but to run this lab, you're going to need to collect a few pieces of information. Uh, first and foremost, you'll need to go down to Identity and Security and capture your compartment ID, uh, your compartment OSID. So in this case, we'll go to CBaber. I can click right here and hit Copy. Okay. You want to record that in a notepad. Next, you want to go over uh, and go to your profile and mouse down to your API keys. If you don't have an API key, uh, I would say add an API key, which you can do real quickly. If you do have an API key, the other information you'll need is just inside the configuration file here with the user, uh, fingerprint, and tenancy OSIDs. So you want to copy all those. You'll also need your PIM key uh, as well, your private PIM key. Uh, now to get started, we're going to go up into our application, uh, into Workspace Utilities, and we're going to click on Web Credentials. Here we're going to create a new web credential. Go ahead and give it a name. Uh, the important thing is to remember your static ID that you provided, and you want to select uh, the OCI authentication. Here you'll see the fields that you just collected uh, will uh, be present where you can put in the values. At the end of the day, it would look something like this. With a web credential in place, you can go ahead and uh, apply or save your changes, and now you're ready to uh, augment your application uh, with GenAI. We're going to go into our learning examples, and we're going to go into our, our baseline page here. This is the first page I showed, where it's dynamically um, on LLV click, uh, executing code over here that will uh, display the image uh, of the baseball player selected. But we haven't added the GenAI components. All right, the first thing we're going to do is going to add a new page item. Uh, we're going to call this, it's a display only page item. Page eight. Player stats. It'll be just of type display only. And we'll give it the label about AI generated stats. Next, we'll go over here and add a new action. We're going to call this set player stats. Okay. And we're going to execute PL SQL code right here. Now, as you paste in this code, my uh, GitHub link will be in, in, in the footnotes of this video. Uh, there are a few fields that you're going to need to add in. The first is the web credential name, and this is the static ID you recorded earlier. Next, you'll want to get the compartment ID that you saved earlier. Paste that in. All right, and with that, uh, a couple things. You can see what we're doing is we're collecting and building a post payload, uh, which is the input prompt we're going to ask Gen AI. Uh, we're going to use a key here model, actually the key here command light model. Um, and then I've added in statements. I'll show you a little bit for debugging. You want to definitely, if you reuse this code, mark these out. But this will help us understand exactly what's happening on the post call uh, to and from uh, the GenAI service. When we receive the response, we will put that information uh, into a, uh, it'll be a, a JSON response type. We'll actually form a query uh, where we put the payload into a JSON table. We'll query that information to output our response. Um, the other thing we need to change is make sure that we put our output variable to P8, uh, which is the one we create, the display only we created earlier, or whatever your page number is. So with that, we can go ahead and validate and save. Now, before we run this, we need to set the input as player. That's what we're going to submit. And the output we're going to return is the player stats uh, when this runs. Save one more time. Let's go ahead and run the page. Go ahead and click Ricky Anderson. 
and we can see that his career batting average came back with some stats about him. Now, one of the cool things under the cover is if you go to the debug, if you want to actually see what's happening here, and this will come into play uh, definitely as you, as you uh, work with other models and figure this out. Um, I've included the debug statement so you can see the exact rest post payload that was formed. Uh, and the question that we dynamically generated is what is Ricky Henderson's career batting average? We did lower the temperature and the number of tokens to you know, limit the, re the response. We're not streaming the answer back. It's coming straight. Um, down here is the actual rest payload uh, that we received back. Um, so you can see this would be the, the rest payload if you wanted to copy this and analyze it. And where that's important really is next, uh, you know, understanding how you query this rest payload in a JSON table. So I'm going to go ahead and, and copy this uh, right here. And we're going to go back into uh, SQL Workshop real quick and show you a little bit about how this query works. Um, because as you do change models, that JSON payload will adjust. So for starters, when you put it in, uh, we're essentially selecting values from our JSON table. We're passing in the payload. It doesn't look like we have, but a few escape characters. Let me go ahead and escape those out. And those escape characters in PL SQL will execute just fine, but in SQL uh, Workshop, you do have to kind of escape them. Right, so um, once we get our payload, uh, what we're doing next is we're looking through the JSON and we're following the path uh, for the first inference response and the generated text, right? So you can see generated text here. And then we're grabbing the first occurrence of text, which is right here. And that will return or should return on this query uh, what you saw on the page. So, if we go ahead and run, so let's go ahead and run it. Make sure you don't highlight it if you run it. There we go. We can see the response that came back. Now, if you want to query more items from this, uh, you can simply put a comma in and you can uh, define the column name, which you want it to come be titled, what the, the type is of our car. And then you can simply identify a different path. So in this case, we're going to get the ID number right here. They ran for the model as well. There we go. So we can very easily query the JSON. All right. Well, what if we wanted to change the model after this? What if we're working in our app and we, you know, we really want to use the Llama model instead? Um, how difficult is that to adjust as, as we build Gen AI into our, uh, our Apex applications? It's actually really quite easy. Um, so first thing we do when we open this code up here. Um, so the only thing we really have to change here is the Gen AI post payload. Go ahead and paste that in. You can see here we've got a run type of llama. We've got our prompt, our tokens, the number of generations. We're going to add the parameter is echo false. So we don't repeat the question. We're not going to stream. Uh, we're going to change our on demand. Uh, our serving type will stay on demand. We'll change our model ID. Uh, and last but not least, we'll, we'll include our compartment ID. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit invalidate. And, and OK. We'll save this page. And let's go ahead and run it. Now, specifically, the first time I run this, it's going to fail. And I just want to show you exactly why. So we're going to see it. It's going to fail. Oh, what happened? What happened? We can go into our debug here. And this is one of the reasons I included some of the text earlier. We can look what happened. We can see that um, we actually formed the response correctly. OK. We received the response back. Um, we've got our JSON query. But our JSON query didn't pull anything back to populate our variable. And this is why I wanted to make sure that you understood a little bit about how we're querying the table. So if we go back into our SQL commands, paste this in. Uh, we will have to comment out a few escape characters. All right. Uh, now we should be able to run this, and it will crash. It's not going to find any results. It's like, oh, what happened? Well, the main reason is, is the JSON payload, as I mentioned, did change. So here we can see the run type. Uh, we've got llama created, uh, but we've got a different word here, choices, before we get to the text. Um, so we simply need to fix that. Uh, all we have to do is change this. So we still have in first response. We still have, what now we have choices right here.
and we've got the word text. There you go. So with that, I'm just going to copy this little part of the query. We'll go back to our code. So all we need to do is go back into our code and modify this line so that it queries the right JSON value. Go ahead and validate. Save. Okay. And we can run our page. And the last item uh, that it will show that I forgot to show earlier, but maybe of use, is in here when you're looking for your model ID. Okay. Um, if you're using the base models, you can simply go in to the GenAI service. Go into your playground, view model details, scroll down, and see the information right here. 